Hey everybody, I'm Spencer and welcome to a Lighten Up Initiative Kickstarter preview. In this video, I'm going to tell you about 18 holes. I'm going to tell you 18 things I like about 18 holes. No, that would be a pretty long video, but 18 holes is by Ryan Boucher. And by the end of this video, you will know if I like the game or not, and if I recommend that you back it on Kickstarter. So without further green things, insert bad golf pun here, let me put my golf hat on, and I'll get you started telling you more about the game. No, this is dumb. Okay, so here we have 18 holes. You see I've got this configuration of golf course tiles. There are stacks of some more over there. Here are shot cards going from chip 2, 3, 4, 5. This is a stack of club cards. Here are some players with some different player powers. I've got some artwork that's not finished on these over here, but there are several different ones. Got some adjustment tiles over here that you can use to adjust parts of the course by covering up like that. And you got some point tokens over there in various denominations. Now when you play 18 holes, you can make your course in a variety of different ways. There are some pre-made examples you can use from the rule book. Um, this one, in fact, is the starting game suggestion. So there are only six holes on this course. Each hole starts with a tee box and then finishes up with a green. And then depending on um, how you build the course, there'll be a certain number of fairway tiles in between each. All the tiles have some kind of variation of um, fairway hexes and then rough hexes. We've got trees that, are getting, that will get in the way, sand traps, and then water hazards. In addition to the pre-made courses, you can also make your own custom course. And you can do that by just throwing out tiles however you want or you can follow this method. If I were to use the uh, random method to build the course, um, I would do it this way. I've got different piles here. I've got the tee boxes, greens, and then fairway tiles. I put this one down. Um, it says par four, one tile. So that means I'd put that down, take the top fairway tile, and you'd randomize all these, mix them up. And then I would take a green tile. And that's how I do that. Then I go with the next tee box, which in this case is a self-contained um, little hole here. And you can go whichever direction you want. I'm just going this way because it's more convenient for me. All right, and then the next time is I would do this. And then this hole says one tile. So I take another fairway tile here and then do a green or yeah, a green there. Again, there's another little um, course or little hole there. And then I would just keep going until I had 18. Oh, and you would use these little tokens here uh, to mark which hole is which. You put that as you go on, make sure you get them in order. Um, this one says no tiles, so I wouldn't put a fairway tile and I would just finish it off here. There are also several different modes you can play. You can start off with the first game scenario to learn the basics of the game, or you can use one of the other modes, which include match play, chaos golf, uh, stroke play, and five other modes. You also will have the option to play solo or in teams. Points are earned depending on the mode you play, but the method of hitting the ball remains consistent. Now, other than the learning game, you will get your hand of club cards by drafting at the beginning of the game. That way you have a say in the cards that you get. Um, depending on the course's layout, you may want to choose different cards or different clubs, and uh, by drafting, that'll give you a better chance of getting exactly what you want. But when you play, each player will have a hand of five uh, club cards. Um, I've got an eight iron, two iron, pitching wedge driver, and four iron. On a round, each player will pick their club. So you're simultaneously choosing the club that you want to play. In this case, my four iron lets me draw and play one card from either of the decks shown above, which is a three and a four. Now, as the cards go higher, in number the further they're going to hit the ball in this case since I'm not going too far I'm gonna draw a three and here this card shows me how to hit the ball it's got this this flight path here this ball path so it's gonna show me I'm gonna hit my ball one two and then land in three hexes now I can choose which direction to go um, I could go straight ahead if I wanted to I could go this way now if I went in this direction I would hit the trees if I went this direction, I'd go off the course, go out of bounds, and have to start back where I was. So instead, I'm going to choose to go forward. And I'll go one, two, land here, three. 
And that's my play. Uh, that's how I've hit the ball. And then whoever's next in the round will take their turn. Some other types of cards you'll see are, um, in this one in particular, you'll see um, that the ball goes slightly to the right. So if I were to hit from here, I would go one space, and then if the tree weren't there, I would land here. But since the tree's in the way, I'd have to stop there. Let's say I hit and my ball landed in the rough. Well then, whenever I draw a card, let's pick um, this one. If I were to draw this card, um, I would have to go one fewer hexes. So instead of going one, two land, I'd have to go one land. Because I'm hitting from the rough, um, it's harder to get out of there. Hitting out of a sand trap has its own challenges. Um, when you play, you whenever you play one of your clubs, you have to nominate which direction you want to hit. So say I'm stuck here, and I say I'm going to hit in this direction. Then I would draw a card. There's another super hit. Draw another card. And only look here at the bottom. Now, if the arrow's pointing forward, that means it goes in the direction that I want it to. So in this case, I would succeed. Um, but if there was no arrow there, it would be stuck. I wouldn't get out. And then the other directions of the arrows, it would make the, the ball come out in a direction that I didn't want it to go. After you've played your turn, after you've done your hit, you'll flip your uh, club card over and now you can't use that again until you've used all the rest of your club cards. So on the next round, I'd have to pick one of these other guys um, and not the one I've already played. Now the only exception is if you decide, you know what, none of these other clubs that I have are any good. So let's play, I've played two more. Um, none of these other cards, I don't want to use these, they're no good for where I'm at. So instead of playing a club card, I'm going to use this turn to uh, refresh all my hand and start again. Now, on my next turn, I can then pick any card from my hand. You'll have other kind of crazy cards, like this says, um, discard and draw a card from the three deck. Um, so that kind of adds some um, interesting surprises there. Um, or short, um, discard this card, draw a new card from the two deck. Um, again, so that kind of changes some things. It's kind of like real golf when you accidentally mess up uh, like me. <laughs> So once each player hits their ball, blah, 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 um, the, the course will be over depending on what game you play. Um, like I said, the, each, each game mode has its own particular way of finishing up. Um, and then you all just run around the course. There are no golf carts or caddies, so you got to do it all on your own. And then finally, you'll finish the course. All right, that's enough for you just to get the gist of the game. All right, so as you see there, there's not a whole lot of complexity going on there with the rules but that doesn't mean it's not an interesting game. First of all, I love the idea of this game. Uh, you don't see too many golf games, and I actually can't think of any uh, off the top of my head, um, but I like that this explores a new new territory for a game. Um, and, you know, there really aren't that many sports games either, um, but golf is an excellent uh, theme to explore, and I appreciate that, and um, I think that um, this game really executed that well. One of the things I think is really fun is that it's not just, here's a game about golf, but the uh, the story created to, to kind of explain the way some of the things work in the game about the, the evil golf manufacturers. That's a fun and nice little touch. I think you're really going to get your mileage out of this one, or I guess your yardage out of this one, because, you know, you, yards and golf. But um, there's so many different ways you can play the game, from all the different, I think they're like eight, different modes to play and the fact that you can play it solo and, and in teams cooperatively. Um, there's so many different ways and then plus the way that the, the, the board, the, the courses are, are configured, whether it's one that's already designed or uh, random or just making one up. Um, there's that and then you know if you just want to do a short game, maybe like five or six or seven holes, you can do that. Um, and it's great to have those options whenever you bring this game out and I think that's going to help a lot of people out. Um, when deciding, you know, if th they have time for this game or um, if this is right for this group. Now, there are a lot of different ways you can set this game up, so it's pretty versatile. Initially, when I started taking a look at the game, um, I didn't think there, were, there was that much going on, like, decision-wise. Or, okay, you play a card, and then you, you draw a card, and then you hit the ball, whoop-de-doo. But there's actually a lot more to it than that. Uh, first of all, with the, um, the uh, action selection uh, thing going on, we only have the five clubs to choose from. Um, you've got to be careful and really think about which to play at the right time um, because of the way that the, the uh, distances restrict you as far as you can hit the ball. 
um, you may think, okay, I want to play my um, four, the card that lets me hit or draw from the four deck, um, because it's going to get me pretty far away. Um, but if you end up getting one that, that hits too far or it turns to the wrong direction, that really might mess you up. And so it might be safer to draw a, a lower lower iron or lower a card that draws from the lower deck just to be safer and you have more control over the ball that way. So that's one thing. Um, you also have that decision of, okay, I can try, try to play one of these cards, that I, one of these uh, clubs that I have, or I can just go ahead and take this turn to reset my hand so that I have all my options um, from for the next round going forward. Another interesting choice you have is, again, you can play one of those cards and maybe get it exactly where you, maybe get the ball exactly where you want it to, or you can just kind of waste one essentially to hit that ball uh, one space. So maybe you're two spaces away and technically you could draw a card that would get you right in the hole, but that's taking another choice or another chance that you might hit in the wrong way. So if you want to be safe, you can just play that one card so that you can move one space. And I, and I appreciate that because um, you're never, not always going to get lined up perfectly to get the ball in the hole. And I like having that option to be able to just basically tap the ball into the hole. The game actually has a lot more pressure luck element to it than I thought there was going to be. So then you have the thing where you, you draw which number card you want to do, um, knowing that you may get just the right card if you draw from this deck, um, or it may be wrong, so it might be safer to draw from this one. Or you have the chip shots, where um, when you draw those chip, chip cards, uh, you nominate which direction, and um, you may hit straight, or you may hit to the left or to the right, and so um, you're taking the chance on that, you may end up hitting the ball in the wrong direction. And then there's the big shot, or the super duper big shot, whatever it's called, where you can uh, say, I'm going to draw... Uh, two cards from this pile, and then the players get to choose which card I play. And that's another chance that you're taking, but it may end up benefiting you. So I like that there's that risk-reward kind of thing going on where, um, like, I guess, real golf, I don't play golf, mini golf maybe, I'm kind of an expert there, but, um, you know, sometimes you might hit the ball and thinking that it's going to go one way, but then you've got the wind and, and all the other stuff factoring in, and I feel like that's kind of um, expressed here because of the way all of the um, this uncertainty goes whenever you're drawing your cards. It's not totally random though, but you do have the control by choosing the right clubs. Some will let you draw two cards and pick one. Um, some give you the option of drawing from one deck or the other. Um, so there are ways that you can kind of control how the ball is going to go. Some give you the option of, instead of um, it's kind of like a wild. Instead of going to the left or to the right, it gives you the options to go one way or the other. And you've got the player powers that kind of help uh, mitigate some of those crazy things that may happen too. So there's not just, it's not just completely up to the wind on what's going to happen. You have a lot of different ways to keep the ball in control. A few other things that I really appreciate about 18 holes is, first of all, the introductory game. I think that's awesome that there's this unique set of rules and course for everyone's first game. Um, some people may want to skip over it, that's fine, but I think that it does a great job of, of capturing everything that's going on in the main game and teaching it in a real um, digestible small piece and um, really eases players into the game, and I really like that. One of my favorite mechanisms is in this game, and that's the simultaneous action selection mechanism. There's just something about it that I like where you're choosing your action not knowing what everybody else is going to choose. And so you can't base your decision um, off of what everyone else is going to do. So you may play a card that you draw from the same pile as somebody else, um, but you would have to go in a certain order and resolve it that way. So someone may be able to get to, to the deck before you. So there's that going on. I also like that you have to make that decision, as I mentioned earlier, of I'm picking this card and putting it down. Um, but is this the right card to put down? Because as soon as I put it down, I can't bring it back up, and a lot to think about there. I like the drafting clubs at the beginning, that it's not just random, you're not just dealing out cards. Um, I like that you can look at the course. Uh, depending on how you set it up, maybe there's more rough, maybe there's more sand, maybe there's more um, water hazards. And so you can look and see what types of clubs you're going to need. Maybe you have some really long holes so that you may want to make sure you get a driver. Um, and there's those decisions you have to make whenever you're drafting those cards and the next hand comes to you and you can pick. And um, one of the, my favorite things that happens in drafting is you take a card and then it gets back to the person before you and they're, oh, I wanted that one. 
Um, and it's just like, but they had the chance to get it, but they didn't. Um, so having that choice, a little bit of control um, of what clubs end up in your hand, because again, uh, an opponent may pick the one that you want, um, but being able to see just what you have to choose from and making that decision based off of what the hole is, what the course is like, I enjoy that as well. I feel like golf is one of those games that you're going to do uh, when you want to relax. Um, if you can play a game in slacks and a polo shirt, well, there's not that much um, craziness going on. And that's the vibe I get in this game. That's not to say that it's boring, but it feels like I could play this game with, with my friends and sit down and have a conversation, but also have fun with the game. There's not like escalation or anything or any crazy events that come out of the blue, um, but there, you still have that excitement of, of fighting um, for first place, of going back and forth, the scores and whatnot. So again, feels kind of chill, but still enough going on there for it to be an enjoyable experience. And that brings me to my final point, which is the execution of the theme in 18 Holes is fantastic. Everything from choosing your clubs to the way the courses are laid out to um, just how you, you know, you're choosing your clubs based on the course. Um, do I need to hit farther? Do I need to hit shorter? Do I need a special club to get out of the sand trap? Whatever, um, I feel like this does an excellent job of encapsulating everything that is a golf game. So, can I recommend 18 holes? Yes! In fact, I give it a 4 out of 5. Yes, I went there. Um, like I said, the execution of the theme is great. I think that this would be a great game. Um, if you get someone, maybe like your dad or a friend, that's a big golfer, um, but they've never really played modern board games before, this is a great option to bring them into the hobby. You know, they could teach them the simultaneous action, me ac simultaneous action mechanism, the uh, pressure luck mechanism, the drafting, all of those things that may be new to, to players that haven't really played modern board games yet would be um, very attractive to them in this situation. I don't think the enjoyment of the game is exclusive to golfers either. I think people who are not golfers will enjoy this game as well. And now it's time for me to wrap this video up. If this game sounds like something you'd enjoy, make sure you support Seabrook Studios on Kickstarter by backing 18 holes. Until next time, play games, have fun, and lighten up.